All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video, and today we are going to be testing flex fuel on my 340i with the TU high pressure fuel pump. You guys really like the video that I made for the stock high pressure fuel pump, so if you're interested in understanding how much ethanol you can run on your stock pump, feel free to check that video out first. Now, in this video, we're going to see how things change or improve once you've added a TU high pressure fuel pump on your car. And this is basically the smallest high pressure fuel pump upgrade we have available. So I think it's a pretty good baseline. Obviously, if you run a Dorch Stage 2 or an FX200 or something else, the capacity will be even greater. But just to understand with the TU pump, kind of the best value high pressure fuel pump mod, we'll go through this testing on my 340i and hopefully you find this video useful. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. All right, guys, we are back and we are getting ready to test flex fuel on the Stage 2 HPFP or Stage 2 Plus map. So we have a TU pump and a downpipe on the car with an MHD flex fuel kit and we're going to see how the car responds to various amounts of ethanol. So I have just flashed the stage 2 HPFP map. I am running pump gas 93 octane and we will test that out and then we will begin adding ethanol to see where the TU pump hits its limits. So let's go ahead and see how it does on pump gas. So we've got some baseline times on the Stage 2 HPFP map. The draggies look okay. We'll have to look at the logs when we get back home, but now it's time to add some ethanol. So we are going to go ahead and get into the hidden menu and get this mixed together so we can run E40 and see how the car does. And as expected, that was much, much better. So super happy with the performance on E40. Now we're going to go ahead and pump it with as much E85 as we can get in there. Hopefully we can get it at least above E60 or E65. And let's go do a couple more pulls. Then we'll head back to the garage and review our logs. Alright guys, so we are back and now it's time to go through the data just like before and we will start with the draggy results. So on my 93 octane map, I ran 11.3860 to 130. That wasn't too bad, you know, it was a little bit quicker than the stock pump 93 octane map, but it still was slower than my stock pump E30 map, which I thought was pretty interesting. But, you know, the car was pretty quick for what it was. After that, we went back to the fuel pump and we filled it up with a little bit of ethanol to target E40. I still didn't quite hit E40. It landed at E39. So for whatever reason, every time I try to get my mix exact, it gets like 1% under. Maybe with a little more driving, it would hit E40. But that's where we landed. And still, it took off a significant amount of time. I ended up running a 9.6 second 
60 to 130. So that is over a second faster, almost two seconds faster than the 93 octane time. Then we went ahead and just filled up the rest with E85 to see where we landed. It ended up hitting around E68 or E69 since I still had some pump gas in the car. And at that point, my fastest 60 to 130 was a 9.87. So actually not that much slower than my E40 time, but it still was a little bit slower. Now, let's go through a couple details here really quick. We're going to go through the data logs, but just from the data from the draggy, you can tell that the E40 time is still the fastest. And that's going to be the case pretty much no matter what. An ethanol mix between E30 and E50 is going to be the best performing map for your stock turbo. And the reason for that is because your direct injection system just cannot support enough fuel flow to run full E85 and push your stock turbo to its limits. That's just kind of the case that it is. Now, where you land in there depends on the tune. So I know some people target E50, some people target E40. It really depends on the tuner's preference because some people like running more boost, some run more timing, some run it hotter with leaner AFRs. So all of that has an effect on where that optimal mix ends up. So in MHD's testing, it ended up as E40. On other companies' tunes, it might be E50 or even E60. Some people stick with E30. It just really depends. So you can't really just look at the ethanol mix and assume that the car is going to be faster or slower when you're comparing it between different tuners. There are going to be a lot of different things that play an effect on how that tune actually performs when it's out in those real-world scenarios. Another thing to keep in mind is only MHD offers this functionality for the optimal mix. So most companies figure out where the E85 lands and they kind of make a flat line towards that optimal mix and keep all of that at their 100% load. And then it tapers off as it goes towards pump gas. Whereas with MHD's tune, they're basically able to scale it up towards that optimal mix, then scale it back down to full E85. So in our case, it's really easy to hit that fast time when you're running a mix. But in other tuners cases, you might get better performing times. Actually, you most likely will with a regular flash map. So if you just flash that E40 or E50 tune, it'll usually perform better with that mix. Then the flex fuel tune will perform with that same mix. But again, it just depends. I recommend doing similar testing and running logs if you guys are interested in understanding that better for your specific setup. Another thing to note is that in my testing, full E85 makes more power than pump gas. And this is a question I get a lot because a lot of people tell me, you know, I must not know how it works. E85 can't make more power than pump gas because the fuel system is just so limited. But on our cars, the octane is a really key component in making big power, and it really just likes E85. And you can see in my testing at E69, it's making more power than E40. And even if I went up to E85, it would be significantly faster than the 93 octane map. So again, feel free to test it out yourself. But this is my evidence and proof of why I tell people that running a full E85 map is still faster than running a pump gas map. You just need to make sure that you have a tune for the ethanol mix or the full E85 that you plan on running. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these data logs to better understand how everything performed and why it performed the way that it did. All right, so now in this log, we're going to be looking at the different mixes. So like I said, I ran pump gas initially, then I went up to E40, it ended up landing around E39, and then I filled up as much E85 as possible. It ended up hitting around E69. So. Initially, again, we will look at the RPMs, and I explained this in my last video, but you can see on the E85 tune, there's like this weird jump in RPMs, and it's way shorter than the other logs. The reason is because there's a chunk of data missing here. Since I was running draggy at the same time as I was taking logs, there were connection issues, and that's why my draggy doesn't show the temperature or the DA, and that's why sometimes my logs are missing chunks of data. But it still should give us good visibility to like the peak numbers so we can compare how the tunes did and just understand like the pros and cons of trying to run different amounts of ethanol. So first thing we're going to do is look at rail pressure. I actually forgot to do this on my stock pump uh, data log review, but obviously this is extremely important. If you're going to be running E85, it's more stressful on your fuel system and you need to be more deliberate with your tune to make sure that you're not overwhelming your fuel system. So in this case, all of my rail pressure looks good. It's all around 2,900 to 3,000 PSI. So that's exactly what you want to see in a good flex fuel tune. If you're having any issues on your flex fuel tune above a certain amount of ethanol, the tuner needs to address it. You should not have to limit yourself to E40 or E50 if it's a real flex fuel tune. That's my opinion. I want to be able to run full E85 and pump gas and switch back and forth whenever I want. So this is important to me. 
So just make sure that everything is working well, regardless of how much ethanol you run. Now, next, we'll look at boost because that's going to be one of the main things, obviously, that's affected by running ethanol. As you add more E85 to your fuel system, you're going to be more limited on how much airflow you can support, which means you can't run as much boost. So starting with 93 octane, we can see we're peaking around 21 PSI. Really good for 93. On E40, we're peaking around 20 here. We're hitting 22 there, but that is probably causing a throttle closure. Let's see where it's tapering out up here in the higher revs is around 20 to 21. So pretty close in boost, to be honest. You can see towards red line, there's a bigger delta, and on 93 it drops off. But pretty similar, at least in peak boost numbers. Then when we go to E85, you can see the peak boost is lower. Now it's around 19 degrees. Here it's barely getting over 19 degrees towards red line. So yeah, you're going to expect this, but more E85 typically means less boost in your tune. Now, the reason why E85 is still faster than 93 octane is because of timing. Now timing is really important because if your car has good knock resistance, then you're able to run more efficiently, get a better burn, a bigger boom, which creates more power. And that's where E85 has a really big advantage, especially in my case where my pump gas is not good at all. So on 93 octane, we can see my peak timing is around eight and a half degrees, or let's see up here higher, we're hitting around nine and a half degrees. If we check E40, it's much higher. So we're going up from nine and a half degrees to 16 and a half degrees. So a crazy improvement, seven degrees more timing. Obviously, E40 is going to perform really well. And then if we go up to E85, it's even higher. Again, the data is truncated, so it looks weird. But the peak here that we're seeing is around 18 degrees. So even more timing on full E85 is expected. However, because it's running so much less boost, it's not actually performing faster than E40. And you can expect as you get closer to full E85, it'll continue to drop that boost lower and lower on the flex fuel tune. So it'll be slightly slower as you get real full E85 in the tank. And last thing we want to look at are AFRs. So on 93, we're seeing our AFRs dip to around 12.6, which is pretty much what we expect, 12.5, 12.6. On E40, looks like it's about the same. We're getting 12.7 here, 12.5, 12.6 here. So that's really safe. Now on E85, because we want to see as much boost as possible, so we don't sacrifice performance, and because we know E85 burns cooler, we typically run it a little bit more lean to optimize it. And so you can see here it's around 12.8 to 12.9 AFR. So a little bit more lean, but still considered safe when you understand that E85 is a fuel that burns cooler, you know, will have lower EGTs and all the things that tend to cause damage when you're running lean are not as affected when you're running E85 fuel. So yeah, again, just the data speaks for itself like usual. I really hope you guys understand everything that I went through. Feel free to do this testing yourself. If you have a flex fuel kit, the whole point is to be able to run any amount of ethanol that you want. So if you're running into issues where over a certain amount of ethanol, the car is running into misfires or having fuel pressure dips, something in that tune needs to be addressed, whether it's an off-the-shelf map or a custom tune. You guys need to reach out to your tuner and make sure that you get that diagnosed properly because if it doesn't work like this, then I feel like it's not really a flex fuel tune that's optimized for your car. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.